Hello and welcome to KennyRoy.com. I'm Kenny Roy. This is the Ask Video Mail for the week of October 3rd, 2011. Welcome to the site, to the new members, and welcome back to the old. The Ask Video Mail is your chance to get your question in character animation or performance answered in a mail just like this one. But if you want your question answered, I gotta have it, so you gotta send it to me. Please send your Ask Video Mail questions to webmaster at kennyroy.com. I go through all the questions and I answer the ones that I hope will help the most people. I've got a lot of great questions in my inbox recently. Just because you've sent one before and I haven't answered it doesn't mean you can't send one again. Remember, I go through them all and I try to answer the ones that uh, are going to help the most people, meaning I've got the question more than once or it's a broad topic that I think it covers a lot of problems that people are having or whatever. If you really, really, really think that your question uh, should be answered, uh, convince me. Send me another email with the question and uh, go into a little bit of detail why you think that other people uh, may be having this problem. I can't answer them all, but I do answer all the ones that I uh, I think will be very valuable. So please send in more questions. I can always use more. It's October already. That means that I just archived the August materials. They are in the store now. I have some people that sent me questions as to how they could get their hands on it and I had to explain um, why I archive it. And here's the quick and dirty explanation. If you have been a member at KennyRoy.com for the past year, then you have been paying a subscription to see all the videos. If I just left all the videos up, someone who joins right now would be able to get all of the videos that basically you were paying to, at, through your subscription for me to make. So it wouldn't be very fair, would it? It would just encourage people to wait and wait and wait until there's a lot of videos. So it keeps it fresh. It protects the value of your subscription to archive them. You do get a hefty discount if you are a member. So check out the archive and uh, check out the video mail archive. If you're a new member, I see a lot of new members. Um, someone signed up and got all of the lectures. Uh, the other day and I was surprised like wow this person really wanted the lectures and which is great and I'm super appreciative I really I really love the support and it makes me feel really good but the video mails are a huge value as well four video mails and some some months have five video mails just because of the way the calendar works um, it's a huge value for the same price 995 uh, for members uh, as the as the lectures are so you can get four or five videos sometimes in uh, for the same price as a lecture and it covers a variety of topics so the video mail archive is just as valuable in the store but I did want to explain uh, why I do that so uh, thank you to those members who had the the question uh, CTN is coming up in just a little over six weeks we're all going to be converging in Burbank California for the Creative Talent Network Expo November 18th 19th and 20th it's a hugely exciting time it's basically like animator explosion it's pretty much all animators whereas SIGGRAPH for instance is a lot of technical artists um, generalist TDs those kinds of things uh, animation uh, CTN is, is all animators and animation and it's just really fun and, and super fantastic so if you're coming to that find me I will have somebody handing out promotional codes and those promo codes will get you a free month on KennyRoy.com even if you've already signed up you can apply the promo code to your membership and it'll give you 30 days free so uh, find me or find uh, my person handing out those promo codes and it'll be, it'll be a great time. Definitely come up and say hi if you recognize me. I love to talk to people. It's a, it's a great time. So that's uh, pretty exciting. And then also I have a few big projects coming into the studio here and I may be looking for animators. So watch uh, the front page of KennyRoy.com or follow me on Twitter or Facebook, Kenny Roy or Google Plus. You can add me to your animation circle if you're on Google Plus. Um, and I'm going to be revamping the Arconics website in the next two months or so. And then um, I will, there will be a job section that's a little bit easier to find. And um, just check there, watch there if you're looking out for work. Okay, um, that's all for announcements. Let's get to the question this week. Um, it's a good question and it is,
It's a very good question. Um, I wanted to explain just what gimbal lock is so that everyone is on the same page. Um, first, this is what gimbal lock is. Here we have, actually let's use this Altoids case. This is um, a little bit better. We have an Altoids case. And I did this little demonstration, but it's very hard to see in the intermediate cartoony lecture, which is in the archive. Um, let's say this is your object, okay? And let's say that it was created like this. So this is the z-axis, it's pointing forward. The way Maya works is when you're transforming and rotating an object, it actually kind of temporarily forgets what it is and where it is and where, which way the axes are pointing until you let go of it. It's kind of how it works. Okay? And so what ends up happening is it tries to solve the rotations for basically like what it looks like to a certain degree. So meaning, if I start like this and I end it like this, it's almost like Maya looks at it, closes its eyes, and then opens its eyes and looks and says, okay, how did you get here? Is it a 180 degree turn in y-axis or is it a 180 degree turn in x-axis and a 180 degree turn in z-axis. So you can get to the exact same solution by doing 180 in one direction in one axis or 180 in the other two axes. If you, if you look at pretty much every single rotation you can think of in your mind, that it's exactly how it works. All right? So this is 180 in Y, which is also 180 in X, and then 180 in Z. Or if I want to do 180 in Z, um, which is just this, right? it would be 180 in X, and then 180 and Y. You see that? So, see how this is piling up? What happens is, is when Maya all of a sudden like, tries to figure out what you want, sometimes it doesn't give you the right, uh, the right solution. And so the question is, do I use gimbal and then the Euler filter? It's pronounced Euler. I know, weird. I don't get it, but um, it, do, I, do I use the um, gimbal axes or gimbal manipulator and then the Euler filter, or do I, um, or do I have another trick for it? And, and this is what I would say about gimbal lock in general. You pretty much know that if you're manipulating your object in panel, at some point you're going to get that problem. And so, it's, a little, it's much better to be able to predict that problem and make big movements, big rotations basically, part, a, a different part of your workflow. And so that's what I would, I would recommend. So let's say, let's just take, the, and, and I, I just did this and, and it worked and we're just gonna try it again because, and I might get a different solution this time. Let's say we have this object, and I just pulled a face out of a sphere so we can see which way it's pointing, okay? So let's say we have it here, and on frame 24, we want it up here, but we want it to rotate three times, okay? So on frame eight, I'm gonna rotate it around once, and then, um, uh, frame 16, I'm gonna rotate it around one more time, and then frame 24, I'm gonna rotate around one more time. Okay. All right, look at that. So first, the first rotation, it's rotating at 1,800, or actually it's rotating at 360 degrees in the total wrong direction, the total wrong axis, uh, rather. It's doing it in Z when I wanted it in X. Oh, look, the second one is doing a 180 rotation in uh, X. All right, and now it's doing another 180 rotation, actually the opposite direction. 
Okay, so actually none of those rotations just worked. None of them worked. Okay. So what I would say is that what you need to do is make the fact that you're going to get Euler flips and, and gimbal lock part of your workflow. Meaning if I want like this character to rotate around 360 degrees, then this is how I'm going to safeguard it. I'm going to go or, or rotate around three times. This is how I'm going to safeguard it. All right, I'm, I'm going to delete these keys. Okay, I'm going to delete all the rotation on the on the character. Okay, let's go into the graph editor here, and you can see me doing this. Delete. Okay, and I'm going to set a key, and the one axis that I want to spin, which is Y, I'm going to select that, and I'm going to do three times um, uh, 360. So I can just put 360 in here and hit enter and you see it went up to 360 but let's do um, multiply equals 3 and now we've done 3 rotations all right let's just make this flat tangent for now and now as it goes up look it rotates perfectly 3 times now that may not be exactly the motion that I want but at least I know this while I'm working in panel if I make a little bit of an adjustment all right, let me just make a like an adjustment like this. If I go back to the um, graph editor and it didn't do it this time, see that that y that y um, that y rotation right there. It didn't do it this time, but every once in a while, it will give me. Let, let me try to do one. Sometimes if you, if you just mess with it a little bit like this, just like rotate it and let it go, it, it, it screws it up. Let's see here. All right. Well, actually, it's behaving um, pretty nicely um, in Y. But if you can see now, look at the X and the Z. Okay. So the X and the Z basically are totally misbehaving now between 12 and... 17, they're totally misbehaving. So if you've created your main motion, then what ends up happening is these other two rotate channels, if I go Euler filter now, see how it boop, snapped right back to, you know, basically in line? You have a much, much, much better chance of getting an Euler filter result that is actually a fix and not just like another weird set of gimbal rotations. Um, when you make your main, your big rotations part of your workflow and, and plan for them, make sure they're precise, make sure that they're not a in panel haphazard, just like throwing them in there. Okay, and this happens a lot with IK arms, especially IK arms that, you know, you're doing a big turn like this. I would recommend FK normally for a, a character that's doing a lot of like physically, like turning like around and around and around, but maybe it's not possible, okay? So if you're doing that, know like, okay, this is the positive axis. All right, this is the positive axis for my, my hand. So if he's generally facing this way, I'm gonna set a key and then I'm gonna turn the body around and I'm gonna make sure that the Y rotation in this wrist is positive 180. And you might just, even before positioning the controller, even before doing anything to the controller, you might set a key here and then he's gonna leave his hands behind. So his hands are like through his body, but he's turned this way. You may want to just on this frame with his, where his body is turned this way, grab his hands, set a key, and then put positive 180 on this hand. And then it's going to break, it's going to turn around. But you know that you put it in there, and that and that is the axis you want, the y axis. It's the one you want. It's not going to try to build it out of x and z, right? Um, it's the axis you want, and it's the value and the direction you want. It's positive 180. And then you know as you're positioning the hand and as you're like doing this turn, you add a breakdown right here, even if the hand starts going like to there to try to like build this Y out of X and Z, that Euler filter will work. 
it'll work a hundred percent of the time if you planned this and and and, and really it, it, it's funny gimbal lock is a, uh, a a pesky problem that will actually never go away why because there there is you can build any pose out of one axis or a combination of the other two and so we're just going to have to get used to the fact that with in 3D our motion in panel is always going to be interpreted and and kind of recreated after we let go so the more work you do in your graph editor especially you should be working with your graph editor open I mean um, if I'm work, I didn't work with my graph editor open, but if I wanted to basically make this pose, see, it did it again, right? See, I just rotated it and I let go, but I rotated it. This is exactly where it used to be. It's exactly where it used to be. And it did the weird X and Z thing again. If I'm working with my graph editor open and I see the X and Z start going crazy, then I know, okay, well, this is the pose I want and my Y is perfect. So I'm just gonna go boom, Euler filter, and it's back in action. It's back where it's supposed to be, okay? So you working with your graph editor open is pretty much the best way you can, you can proof your, gimbal proof your workflow against gimbal lock. Foolproof. Gimbal proof your workflow against gimbal lock. That makes sense. And not, not much sense, but it makes sense. <laughs> Bear with me, people. Um, anyway, so um, very good question. I do have, you know, that is my trick. And, you know, if we play back this animation now, okay, if we play back what we see here, we get um, basically a good sense of the animation that we wanted to see. And then... We, we know that as we're working, we're not going to get ourselves into trouble, okay? It's definitely, definitely not a, 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 a decision that is made by a studio for you. It is definitely a personal decision, and, and, and if there's anything in animation that is personal, it's a workflow, isn't it? So there we go. There's that pesky word coming up again. Workflow, workflow, workflow. It's important, and it, it, it makes all the difference. So please... Um, I'll give you the scene. I'm not sure what you're going to do with it, but you can you can experiment. You can do your own. It, you you saw me do that. If you're not intimately familiar with how gimbal lock finds its way into your scene, then do this and 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 watch it as it happens with the graph editor open. Okay, and then start thinking about making gimbal proofing your workflow uh, a part of your process. Okay. Great question. Please send more questions. I love the questions. Send as many as, you, uh, as many as you have. Okay, the address to send those questions to is webmaster at kennyroy.com. I promise I read them all. There's no such thing as a dumb question. Thank you for supporting the site. I'm looking forward to seeing a lot of you at CTN. I'm going to mention a couple more times. I'm getting geared up and, and ready to rock and roll. Uh, thank you for watching. Good luck with your animation. And as always, rock on. <laughs>